Corn is an amazing plant. It is in so many products in our everyday lives. In fact, over 4,000 products are made from grain corn. And while all corn may look the same from the road, only 1% of the corn we grow in the United States is sweet corn. The rest is used predominantly for livestock feed and ethanol production. The United States is the largest grain producer and the largest corn producer. We export approximately 15% of the crop to over 73 countries around the world. Chopped to feed a silage or shelled and fed whole, flaked, or cracked, corn is a good source of energy. Colorado ranks 15th in grain corn production and we use ours for livestock feed and ethanol production. And today, we're gonna meet the experts at an ethanol plant and they're gonna help us understand how ethanol is made. Welcome to Front Range Energy, Colorado's leading producer of clean, renewable fuel ethanol and other high value co-products. We hope you enjoy your tour. Most of our corn comes in by truck. Corn trucks will pull onto the scale so that a sample can be pulled from it. The sample is then analyzed for color, smell, moisture, bushel weight, and FM for material, and graded. If the quality fits within our guidelines, the truck is permitted to dump in our corn receiving building. The corn is then conveyed into storage and is gradually used over time to feed our milling section of the plant. Corn milling is the beginning stage of our ethanol plant process. Using some calculations, an operator will feed a specific amount of cook water, backset, and corn to equate a certain flow rate of the cook system. The reclaim system is what pulls the corn out of storage and fills our day bin right above the hammer mills. Operations will manually control the feeders above the mills to achieve a specific pounds per minute corn grind rate total. Our cook system is controlled by a specific volume of water, corn flour, and the speed of distillation. A typical mash flow rate is 10 to 15 gallons per minute over what the beer feed rate is in distillation. You would then use a specific amount of cook water and back set along with total pounds per minute of corn grind to achieve a specific mash rate. The production of CO2 in fermentation batches is what requires the mash rate to be higher than the beer feed rate in distillation. CO2 produced shrinks the volume within the fermenters. Cook water is the combination of recycled condensate from different parts of the process. Back set is the water portion accumulated after separation of wet distiller's grains. Yeast propagation is a batch method. Each fermenter that is started will get one of these yeast batches added to them. The recipe is designed as such to produce many yeast cells and not generate ethanol. When the yeast prop batch reaches 8-9 to nine hours, it is then ready to transfer to the next filling fermenter. The growth of yeast cells will now shift into ethanol production in the fermenter batch. Think of this as one giant cup of espresso to get your day started. Our fermentation is batch method. It can take anywhere from 15 to 17 hours to fill a fermentation tank depending on the rate of the plant. This would also mean that we will see anywhere from 57 to 63 hours of fermentation time per batch. As a fermenter goes through cycles, it will generate its own heat from the yeast consuming sugar. Therefore, each fermenter tank has its own plate frame cooler to maintain a set temperature. This ensures that we do not kill our yeast and the temperature stress. Samples are pulled from the fermenter at least every six to eight hours and checked for pH, bricks, and prepared for HPLC, high pressure liquid chromatography. The HPLC will give us a thorough breakdown of the batch. We can see how much sugar is left to ferment and how much alcohol has been made. We can also tell if the yeast has been stressed out by other byproducts that were made such as glycerol, lactic acid, and acetic acid. 
When a fermenter is finished, it is sent to our beer well, where it is then continuously pumped to our distillation segment of the plant. Beer is sent to our beer column to separate the alcohol from the liquid. This vapor, as it leaves the top end of the beer column, is roughly 130 proof vapors. Vapors from the beer column travels to our rectifier column, where we use something called reflux to enrich the proof to 190 before condensing. The now condensed 190 proof liquid is sent to the tank farm for further processing. The remainder of the liquid left in the sump portion of the rectifier column needs to be processed. This still has a small amount of alcohol and is pumped over to a small column called the side stripper. The remaining alcohol is stripped and sent back into the overhead vapor line between the beer column and rectifier column. The now stripped water portion is sent to our cook water tank to be reused in our cook system to produce mash. Molecular sieves are what allows for the removal of the 5% remaining water in condensed 190 proof liquid. We feed a set flow rate of 190 proof alcohol to what is called the sieve vaporizer. Sieves only work in vapor phase and not liquid. As the vapor moves down through the sieve bottle, the water molecules will slip into the pores of the beads also known as zeolite. Once the vapor has reached the bottom of the sieve bottles and exited, we now have 200 proof vapors. These vapors go into the shell side of either EVAP number 3 or EVAP number 4. The heat is absorbed thus allowing the vapors to condense and we now have 200 proof liquid alcohol that goes out to the tank farm. Our molecular sieve system is a three bed system. We have one bottle feeding, one bottle regenerating, one bottle repressurizing in preparation for another feed cycle. From the bottom of the beer column after distillation we now have whole stillage. This product is sent to mechanical separators at the same rate as it is generated. The bigger particles in the stillage are spun out and conveyed to our wet cake pad and is called wet distiller's grains. The water that accumulated from this separation called centrate is sent two different directions. A predetermined amount is used for our front end cook system and is called back set at this point. The other remaining portion is sent to our thin stillage tank and then onto evaporation for corn syrup production. Evaporation is where corn syrup is produced from thin stillage. The energy is balanced based on something called base loss for the beer column and side stripper. We only use the required amount of energy, steam and 200 vapors, to achieve optimization of both the beer column and side stripper column. We then control our corn syrup flow to maintain a set solids amount. This system has an average inbound rate of 225 gallons per minute of thin stillage and 32 gallons per minute of corn syrup moving out bound to our corn syrup tank. The difference between the two flow rates is evaporation that has been condensed and called process condensate. This process condensate is utilized for flushing, cleaning, and to make up our cook system water requirements for mash production. Corn oil is extracted at a certain stage within evaporation. Thin stillage, which only has roughly 8 to 10 percent solids, is too thin for corn oil extraction. Corn syrup for solids is around 36 to 38 and is considered too thick. We pull from a part of evaporation called mid stillage and is roughly 23 to 28 percent solids and gives us the best efficiency for corn oil production. We utilize a technology called a tri canner and spin the oil out with the help of some chemistry for demulsifying the mid stillage. Our corn oil quality is such that it can be utilized by both cattle feeders and biodiesel production industries. Front Range Energy processes 45,000 bushels of corn per day into 135,000 gallons of clean, renewable fuel ethanol. In addition, we utilize the entire kernel of corn while also processing high-value distiller's grains for livestock feed, syrup, corn oil, and CO2 products like dry ice. The American ethanol industry has over 200 production facilities processing over 16 billion gallons of renewable fuel ethanol each year, along with other high-value co-products. Biofuels like ethanol are American-made, renewable, better for your engine and cleaner for your air. Using ethanol also supports American agriculture and is a key market for our farmers. Biofuels dramatically reduce the emissions of pollutants by replacing toxic petroleum additives in our gasoline. Ethanol is the available solution today to decarbonize our fuel supply and reduce vehicle emissions by 39%. Today, the ethanol industry drives $44 billion in economic activity and contributes nearly $9 billion in federal, state, and local tax revenues. An emerging domestic market is availability of clean 15% ethanol fuel known as Enleaded 88 or E15. This fuel is approved for all 2001 and newer vehicles. Consumers have driven over 14 billion miles on E15. It's also the official race fuel of NASCAR, who has raced over 15 million miles on E15. 
Give it a try next time you see it at the pump. It's the Blue Hose. And for those that drive flex fuel vehicles, you can also fill up with high octane E85. On behalf of corn farmers and ethanol producers, I hope you've discovered something new about grain corn and ethanol. And then next time you fill up or you buy a vehicle, you'll consider a higher blend of ethanol like E15 or E85. From farm to tank, I hope you've enjoyed this tour.